Good morning. Um, welcome to our Genesis English Coping Skills webinar. My name is Noelle Cloward. I'm a counselor here at Genesis, and then I also have Belinda joining me today. Good morning. I'm Belinda Cardwell, and I'm also a counselor here at Genesis. Um, yeah, so thanks for joining us um, this morning. We just want to go over a little bit of housekeeping before we start our webinar. Um, so just a reminder, these webinars are for educational purposes. Um, please consider your own situation and safety concerns before putting into practice any of the ideas talked about today. And I also wanted to just make the reminder too that we are now doing these um, once a month versus weekly. So these are done on the first Tuesday of each month. Um, so just so that you're aware of that for these upcoming months. Okay, so just a little more about safety. So please be sure to watch this in a safe place where only safe people could hear it. Um, using headphones can help ensure that no one else can hear what you're watching. Remember to clear your browser history after watching the video if there's someone that monitors your phone or your computer. And then if you do need to leave this live Zoom webinar quickly, I'm just remember that you'll need to click end a couple of times and then close out the Zoom page to be able to exit. A little bit about confidentiality. So please do not use the chat feature on Zoom. Uh, if you do use the chat feature, your name and comment will be seen by anyone watching the live video and the video recording on YouTube. And then also, if you do leave any comments on the YouTube video recording, your name and your comment will be seen by everyone else who watches the video. Um, kind of along with that, we also don't monitor or respond to any comments or questions left on the YouTube video recording. So if you were to make a comment, we wouldn't respond. Um, and then you might miss getting help that you are seeking. So please contact us directly if you do need help. Um, if you have any questions about this specific webinar, you can contact either Belinda, um, her number and her email is listed there, or you can contact me. Uh, my number and my email are also listed here. And then additionally, if you are in a crisis, need help with emergency safety planning, or you're looking for emergency shelter due to domestic violence, please call our 24 hour hotline. That number is 214-946-4357. And then if you would like to sign up for counseling at Genesis or you want to talk to a counselor about your situation, please call 214-389-7700. Okay, and then just a couple other phone numbers that we always wanna give at the beginning of these webinars. So these are some hotline numbers. Um, our hotline number is listed there. Again, that number is 214 946-4357, and this is a 24-7, um, 24 hours a day hotline. Um, then additionally, there's the National Domestic Violence Hotline that you can call 800-799-7233. And they also have a chat line, a chat feature at the hotline.org. So if you're not safely able to talk on the phone, that is an option. And then the National Suicide Hotline number is listed here as well. So that's 800-273-8255. Okay, so today for our webinar, we're going to be talking about the stages of change. Um, this is a theory about how change happens, and we'll um, be talking about you know, what it is, the basics, because it can apply to a whole range of things in our life. And then we'll also talk about how it applies to uh, specifically to domestic violence and to counseling. Um, you know, if you're watching this, you have you know, expressed interest in counseling at Genesis, most likely, and have most likely completed an intake here. So um, we'll cover those topics today as we talk. So what is change, right? Change is making something different, altering it or modifying it. And when we make changes, it happens in stages, not all at once. So I have this pizza here to represent that idea, right? We can't, when we eat pizza, we don't just eat it in one bite with the whole pizza, right? We eat little bites at a time of one slice at a time. And change is the same. We can't, you know, using pizza here, right? Maybe we have a goal to eat healthy. We don't just wake up and then immediately eat completely healthy and never um, have any like regression or any changes back to our old habits, right? Change happens in stages. It doesn't happen all at once. So the theory of how change happens is called the stages of change. And um, this was originally created for quitting smoking, but it can be used for anything. So we're going to talk today about each of the stages in this, um, in this theory. So in the stages of change, um, there are these five stages. So the first one is called the pre-contemplation stage. Um, the second stage is contemplation. The third stage is preparation. Um, the fourth stage is action. And the fifth stage is maintenance. And as we're going through these, I did just want to mention that these stages aren't necessarily linear, right? Change doesn't happen all at once, and it doesn't happen linearly. We go back and forth between these stages, um, and we spend different 
different amounts of time in each. So we're going to list these in order, um, but also recognizing, right, that they are not necessarily linear. Okay, so stage one is called pre-contemplation. So in this stage, this is when we have no intention on changing our behavior, and we may even be unaware of that there's a need to change. So we'll use the example of exercise. I think that's one a lot of us can relate to of wanting, you know, goals to be healthier and whatever else. So to be in stage one or this pre-contemplation stage with a goal of exercise would be um, not even thinking about needing to exercise. So this would be when it's not even a goal. Um, you're you know, content how things are. Stage two is contemplation. So this is when we're aware that a problem exists, but we don't have a commitment to action. So again, with our example of exercise, maybe we think it would be a good idea. We know that there would be a lot of benefits, but we don't really want to give up our sleep or maybe our time that we usually would relax. Stage three is preparation. So this is where we're intent on taking action to address the problem. Um, this is where we start making plans or deciding on you know, specific steps we can take. Um, so the example here um, would be exercise. So that could be making a plan to go check out gyms, maybe buying workout clothes. And um, those could be some of those preparation steps. Stage four is action. So this would be actually taking those actions, the act of changing of our behavior. So um, with this example, um, that could be going to the gym most days, buying new shoes to stay motivated. We're taking those concrete steps now. Okay, and then stage five. So this is the maintenance stage. So this is um, where we have the sustained change. Our new behavior is replacing the old. Um, this is where maybe we'd use that word like a changing of habits where um, now this has just become what we do. So with exercise right now, it's just the habit that we go to the gym. Um, it's not no longer a question, right, of am I going to go or not? Am I going to watch TV or not? It's just the habit of going. And I think, right, we'd all love to be right at this stage with exercise, but it's it's challenging, right? And there's that back and forth and maybe we get to this stage and then we go back to stage one or stage two. And that's really normal. So just a couple other things to note and kind of along with what you know we've been saying is that you know change is not linear. We go back and forth between those stages, have this kind of funny comic on the side, right? Of you know, maybe we learn about it and we hear it and we're like, oh, it's linear, but it doesn't actually go linearly, right? Um, we also usually don't get to that stage five of maintenance until we've been able to consistently be in that stage four for know six months or more and that's just like a general number that we use here at Genesis right could really vary in everyone's specific circumstances but just really want to normalize that change is not easy change is challenging there can be different barriers that come up and it's just really normal to go back and forth so how does this relate to domestic violence let's we're just going to talk a little bit about what each of these stages um, may look like for um, those women who are experiencing domestic violence so let's go through each of these. And I realize our pictures are probably cutting them off a bit. So I'll read through these. Um, but stage one, right? But being in the pre-contemplation stage. And you know, as we're reading these, um, you may find yourself thinking about what stage am I in? Uh, where am I at in my stages of change? Um, so pre-contemplation stage would be um, you know, not recognizing her partner's behavior as abusive, maybe not knowing to be interested in change. It could also include taking responsibility for causing the abuse. Um, we're looking for an answer about how she can be responsible for the change. And then this last point on here makes that maybe feeling, you know, demoralized from trying to leave and failing. Uh, stage two contemplation stage um, may look like recognizing that um, one's partner, his behavior, his or her behavior is abusive. Um, and has an increased awareness of pros and cons of decisions that she can make, but maybe not fully identifying how to be safe or can't imagine how to make those changes or you know, maybe can't imagine how to get help or um, what it would really look like to get you know, the help that she's wanting. Stage three, um, that can look like recognizing that the partner is abusive, intending to create change and developing or has developed a plan for change. Um, so maybe that is knowing, you know, knowing what resources there are and making a plan to contact them and start engaging in services. Um, stage four would be actively engaged in making changes by working towards goals and plans for safety. 
um, creating and actively using a safety plan, um, developing or having a support system that she's able to use, um, is making or has made a decision about whether the relationship is right for her. And of course at Genesis, we don't have a stance on you know, whether a woman should stay or leave. We know that the decision to leave is really complicated and there's many, many reasons why women stay. Um, but we do have a stance on safety. We believe that every woman has the right to be safe and to you know, be able to safety plan. And so um, this safety step, no matter what decision um, is right or has been decided for each woman, safety is really, really important. And then stage five. So stage five is when she is no longer taking responsibility for the abuser's actions, nor participating in the abuse cycle, um, is able to maintain her goals, um, and is taking steps to engage in healthy relationships and use her support system. Um, and again, we've gone through these five stages, and it's normal to go back and forth between these, right? So maybe um, she finds herself in stage four and then finds herself back in maybe stage two or stage one. That's really normal. It's also really normal to maybe wish or hope to be farther along in these stages. And you know, at Genesis, we want to offer that support um, wherever you are. We want, you know, as counselors leading, you know, whether you're attending our open groups, processing groups, or individual counseling, you know, we want to be able to help support you so that if you do want to move forward in these stages, um, we can help you do that. So what about in counseling? Um, so counseling, these stages also apply, right? The con pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. Um, so pre-contemplation stage in counseling, um, you know, that could range from looking like, you know, not even being interested in counseling, not making any plan, maybe um, just not believing it could be helpful, or it could be, you know, attending counseling and then um, just deciding nothing will be helpful from it. Um, contemplation looks like uh, maybe deciding that, you know, being unsure it could help, but maybe thinking this could help. Um, maybe starting to think that it could be helpful to make a plan. Um, you know, if for someone that is already in counseling, the contemplation stage could look like maybe remembering something that was said in an open group, like for example, maybe having learned that deep breathing could be helpful, um, but, you know, deciding not to try it after coming home from the group during a time when someone's stressed. Um, preparation stage, right, that's having that plan, uh, making that decision to, you know, attend counseling or, you know, whatever services that might be. Um, so if for someone already in counseling, this might look like maybe writing down the plan, right, having a plan of these are the three coping skills I'll use when I'm, you know, experiencing depression or some other symptom, uh, but then maybe, you know, maybe um, still needing some Kind of final decision on whether to use those skills like in those moments and um, action right that looks like engaging in groups that looks like trauma processing and um, it looks like using those skills talked about in counseling outside of counseling right it looks like you know having that list of coping skills and then practicing and using them um as well as you know developing resources outside of counseling too and then stage five, that maintenance stage, um, that is what looks like being able to use those coping skills, being able to use safety planning skills um, independently and outside of counseling, um, and then also looking at terminating counseling and, you know, being able to kind of navigate different challenges on one's own with one's own skills. And then just a few last thoughts on creating and maintaining change. I just want to point out again, it's normal to go back and forth between the stages. So um, just remember to kind of give yourself that grace with that, that kind of um, self-compassion and kindness, which we'll touch on again at the last point, but just knowing that it's normal to go back and forth. Um, with creating and maintaining change, uh, being able to identify what stage you're in and then you know, for you deciding whether you would like to move forward in the stages or not, whether that fits your goals, your hopes, your dreams. And um, that's also an important part. I'm um, also identifying supports that can help you progress to the next stage if that is what you want to do. Um, that is another important part. And then remembering that change happens over time and in small amounts. Um, so kind of with that, again, practicing self-compassion and patience with yourself of you know, recognizing that it might be a slow process and you know, ultimately you are the expert on your life and you ultimately get to decide what decisions or changes you want to make. Um, 
you know, counselors and other supports, we're here to um, just offer that, ultimately that support, but you get to be the expert. Um, Belinda, do you have any comments that you wanted to add before we go to the coping skill portion? Um, yes, I just wanted to add that there's a other a webinar we put on about maybe six weeks ago that talks about setting goals. And I think that would go very well with this one because it talks about making your goals specific and measurable and actionable, relatable, and put some kind of timing. So if you feel like you are maybe trying to push yourself to go to the next stage, if you stop and look at your goals and break them down, that might help you decide how to move to the next stage. And if you can't move, then or you've tried to move, maybe you can go back and revisit what your goals were and maybe change your goals. So I think that ties in very nicely with stages of change, um, making it a little bit easier and more directed for you to make that change. And again, I know that Noelle said it several times, but it's natural to go back and forth. It's natural to kind of change your, what your goal is and what your stage is. And you can be in different stages of different things at different times. So you could be in a stage about counseling, a different stage about counseling, then recognizing the abuse and then what you need to do next. So just it's um, normal to go back and forth and to have issues with change because change is, is hard, but it's worth it. Yeah, um, thanks for it. Go ahead. Okay, so I guess we're, gonna, we're ready for the coping skill. Yeah, thanks for adding all that. And I also was thinking there was a webinar from earlier this summer too about safety planning that also could be um, helpful if you're wanting some um, help just in beginning to safety plan. So yes, there is, a, I believe it was in July, the safety planning. And so what we like to do with each webinar is to add a coping skill with the content, um, whether the topic has been kind of difficult for you to understand or you weren't quite ready to hear something or maybe it brought up some emotions. So today we're going to do a meditation on acceptance. I feel like that goes well with the, the topic of change. Um, and so we're just going to do a quick three minute meditation on acceptance. So as all meditations, I want you to find a comfortable seat in a chair or on a cushion, um, let your back be tall, but not stiff. Kind of relax, drop your shoulders, rest your hands in your lap if that's what's comfortable. And then just start noticing the feeling of breathing. Be aware of your body breathing, settling your attention on the place in your body where you most easily experience the sensation, the breath flowing in and out. Let your breathing be normal and natural no need to try and change it or shift it and see if you can let your awareness be open and relaxed. And as you watch your breath, just try to create a sense of spaciousness, not a tight sense or clamp down feeling, but a spacious awareness, just allowing your breath to come and go. If you've noticed your mind has wandered, come back to your breath. When you notice your attention has wandered, bring your attention back to the breath without criticizing yourself or your wandering mind. Accept in the moment that that's what our minds do. They wander and we can work with that by being willing, by being without judgment and simply beginning again. So as you sit in this meditation, you will likely have some moments where you feel focused or relaxed or at ease. If it's easy to accept those moments without trying to struggle with them or change them. Other moments may seem unpleasant. You may feel restless, have some discomfort, even an inch, an itch, excuse me. See if you can hold those moments with some unpleasantness with the exact same quality of open curiosity as those moments that are more naturally easy. Just allow each moment to be as it is. Develop curiosity about it. Watch the changing nature of your experience. Now I want you to shift your attention to any thoughts you're having. Notice what your thoughts are doing. Are you having thoughts about not liking something, wanting it to be different? Maybe there's a conversation in your head where you're trying to convince someone to think or do something differently. See if you could just notice your tendency to try to judge 
and change these situations. Next, explore if you can let go of those thoughts. See if you can summon the willingness to let it be as it is. Perhaps even say to yourself, it is what it is, or I accept. Come back to your breathing, noticing that some of our discomfort is related to the way we struggle, the way we fight, and then maybe it's possible to let at least some small part of that be. Come back to your breath, relaxing into the spaciousness of your present moment and your present experience without judging, but with curiosity and with acceptance. Once you feel you're ready, allow your eyes to open and come back into the present space. Well, thank you again for joining us. I'm Noelle, will you advance to the last slide? Okay, so there again is our contact information if you need to have a question or if you would like to ask a question to either Noelle or myself. And again, these webinars are monthly. So the next webinar will be December, the first Tuesday in December. So we hope you stay well and safe until then. And we'll see you in December. And thank you all for joining. Have a good day. Bye-bye.